Welcome everyone, I'm Nicole Spittler of All Designs Equine. And as you see here, I have a fully decorated rustic carrot wreath. This is going to be the giveaway wreath that I promised you in the last video. How you have to enter for this wreath is just make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel, like and comment on this video, and in the description below, I'm going to have my Facebook page linked. Click on that link, go to my Facebook page on the giveaway post and comment the words done. Also make sure you like my Facebook page so that when I pick the winner on January 30th, that you will be notified. Okay, so now we're going to go on to a different kind of wreath. It's a horse wreath. but it's not the horse wreath you probably were expecting. We're going to be doing a seahorse wreath. Now, as I've mentioned before, I do lots of different kinds of specialty wreaths. I don't just do horses. I have my own laser and I can draw any shape and then cut it. <clears throat> so I do custom stuff for everyone. I even have people on Etsy that I compete with, but they buy a lot of their wood shapes from me. So <clears throat> it works out good for, for both, you know, I don't mind the competition and I also get the business. So if you're interested in creating your own specific shape, please feel free to contact me or visit my Etsy shop. I also will link the custom shape um, link in the description box below. Now <clears throat> you're going to see a little video of me cutting the spindles for this wreath. This is a wreath I've never done before. So I'm going to explain how I got to this step right now, but I decided to try to fit all the shapes because it did take me a while since this is the first time I've done it. So I went and I cut these, all these different spindles out on my laser. And then of course I cut the seahorse. I spray painted the base of the seahorse and it's very important to actually do it two different colors. So I'm gonna show you the paint that I used. And I'm trying to use like three different colors because it's more interesting. So the base of the seahorse is actually this iron lac color. I'm gonna see if it says the color. They used to have it printed on the bottom. Oh, it's called Electro. Okay. So this is this the, the base color. And then I have, this is a Rust-Oleum, which is vintage teal. It's like a dusty, and it gives it a little bit more of a rustic feel. And then I just hit it a little bit with some more iron lac, which is like, almost like a periwinkle or a baby blue. <clears throat> so those are the three different color paints I used. So I glued, I, like I said, I painstakingly kind of figure out where everything went. Then I just took hot glue and I glued it. Now, to give it a little bit more of a rustic feel, I'm going to sand it. Instead of sanding each thing individually and then gluing it on, it's actually easier to do it once it's glued on. So I'm, it's gonna be kind of loud, but I'm just gonna show you real quick how to start the sanding. Of course, you can use just regular sandpaper and just do it by hand. But I'm gonna use a little bit of a small electric sander and I'm gonna start it and then off camera, I'm gonna finish it and then we'll come back. Okay, so I'm gonna do that through this whole thing. But you see, to actually get the rustic, I'm gonna take off some of the paint. So I'll be right back and we'll see how that goes. So you can see now it looks weathered, which is actually perfect for any rustic type wreath. But if you think about how things really get weathered at the beach. This is perfect. 
Okay, so you can take off more if you want, but it actually just took like a couple minutes. And if you wanted even more weathered, that works, but I kind of want to keep kind of the, like the spindle, you can see the spindle um, engraving there. So I like that, I don't want to take that off. But hopefully you can see um, that it's more weathered looking. Okay, and before I do anything else, I just wanted to show you my other really adorable little spindle bunny that I um, did, which um, has this little backpack carrot, um, which I thought was adorable. It's definitely rustic. I do have other bunny wreaths, but this one is just so adorable. So I might um, do a tutorial on how to make this, and it's not very hard actually, but it's very adorable. And then I have another one that my daughter is working on because she has her own cat wreath shop called Catastrophe Treasures on um, Etsy. But this is the beginning where we're just trying to lay out and figure out what she can use. We're missing the ear here, but, um, and then we'll probably do, I, I have this like triple layered and it sometimes it's fun to layer it a couple times. So um, where she has it like here, but Maybe um, I will eventually show you what this is gonna turn out as, but we don't really know at this particular point. And I'm thinking about also doing, of course, a horse wreath. And then I'm sure at Christmas time, I'll do a couple more. I like the, you know, I like all different kinds of looks, but I kind of do like the rustic look. So um, we'll, we're gonna see how this turns out. Like I said, I have not done this before. So this is like basically what I start doing. So sometimes I might change it a little bit off camera because maybe I don't quite like it as well as I thought I did. I'm trying to think, I think I'm actually going to move this styrofoam here because I do want this little, I guess it's called a fin. Not sure any seahorse people might tell me um what that's actually called i'm sorry if i don't know i apologize i know equestrians equines horses but seahorses not so much anyway um <clears throat> but i still think they're super cute uh one of my most i had four viral viral wreaths um two of them were horse one was a carrot wreath and the other one was a seahorse wreath. It was a pine seahorse wreath. So um, even though, yes, I had some equestrian wreaths, but um, two of my most popular wreaths weren't even horses. So you just never know. All right, so I think I'm gonna keep this fairly simple The because I don't wanna, um, you know, the design is actually part of what's so cute about it. Um, and I think I might actually sell this as a DIY where it's just the, um, the non-painted spindles with the wood shape. So if I do do that, <clears throat> I will let you know. I just have to do a little more figuring out um, the sizes of the spindles because I had to really play with it before I could actually glue them on. And it would be nice for people to have the sizes exactly the way they're supposed to be. Anyway, okay. So, what I kind of came up with is doing some layered bows. And I'm going to tell you or show you what I kind of thought might look cute. So, you kind of do have to be creative in looking at some items that even though this is not really nautical, but we could maybe make it look nautical, even though like this ribbon is just burlap mesh and in and of itself, it's not really nautical. This rope is not really nautical rope, but it could maybe look like nautical rope. So I'm gonna use this rope, which can be used for so many things. And this is why I use this rope all the time because 
it can go into so many different looks. It can look rustic, <clears throat> but right here, it's going to actually look nautical. So this is like this green mossy um, ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby, and I thought it was pretty cool. So I was thinking maybe this could also resemble a little bit like the ocean. But then I decided, well, maybe I'll just lightly spray paint it these colors, but then sort of keep the green. So it's like multi, has these different colors, and it's gonna kind of look like the sea. Maybe I'm crazy, but maybe like seaweed or something like that. So I just thought, well, maybe that'll look really cool. And maybe uh, I, I might not have even had to paint it, but I decided to do it anyway. Um, the first time I do a wreath is not always necessarily the best thing that I come up with, but I'm going to try. And I took some <clears throat> grapevine, I soaked it, and I made a bow out of it. But this also has a little bit of grapevine wire. The thing about grapevine wire that's really cool is it's wire, but it looks like grapevine. So some of this is wire, some of this is grapevine. Um, I do have some grapevine horsehead wreaths. They're very difficult to make, not my favorite thing to do, but you have to soak the grapevine and for like, usually I soak it for a good week, get it really soft and then I can mold it. Well, this is kind of that idea, but I'm only using a few pieces of um, grapevine. Now, grapevine obviously also is not very nautical or but if you think about <clears throat> driftwood, that's kind of how I came up with this. This is very loose, <laughs> um, trying to get the driftwood because I didn't really have any driftwood. Um, and if I did have some, I would definitely use it, but I just didn't have it on hand. And I literally just came up with this idea tonight for the video. So once again, going on the wood theme, and I love the solo wood flowers because they are so good with so many things. And we're, I'm kind of going into the driftwood looking thing, very far away, but at the same time can be loosely configured for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna layer everything together. It's not gonna take me long. I made the bows ahead of time and I'm just trying to figure out now like how I'm starting the layer. I think I'm gonna start this <clears throat> at the bottom because it's it's pretty big so I also tied this with grapevine wire instead of my regular wire so it was longer and a little sturdier okay I'm just gonna push that down in okay we're gonna see how this looks I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put it behind it Okay, then I think I'm going to take this bow and put it in between there. And you see I also have a starfish and I do have some shells because obviously we really want to get that beachy theme. Hopefully this is gonna look good. Like I said, I usually have, the first time I do a wreath, I have to play with it a lot. And I take things apart a lot, I rip them apart. Every once in a while I hit it right on the nail on the head, but that's kind of rare. Um, <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna put this in between. Or maybe I'm gonna put this at the bottom, let me see. I'm just gonna lay that here. Okay, I think I'm gonna put that in between those two bows or those two ribbons or whatever you would like to call them. Okay. Okay. All right, now have these wood flowers and I'm also going to put them in between Hopefully. Okay. 
and see how after you know it's pretty easy it's not that difficult to like come up but it did take some thought ahead on my part Trying to figure out what I wanted to do to keep it very rustic. I have these wood fish somewhere and I can't find them. If I find them, I might put them on at a later date. Okay, so let's see how that looks. It looks pretty good. And then now to figure out where to put this. I don't know. You might just kind of hide it and have it like peeking out. So this is so white. <clears throat> I might like to hide some of the starkness of it. So it's just kind of like peeking out there. I don't have it glued on very well. Better. Okay, and then I'm gonna go and grab some shells. Okay, so in keeping with the nautical theme and kind of going with the equestrian theme, I'm going to put like this little bridle on him. It's just going to be very little bridle because <clears throat> so I'm going to just tie that here and then do that, I think. Okay, so, so we don't, I didn't really think this out, <laughs> so I'm going to glue this here and I put this so it doesn't glue to the paper but I just kind of decided to do this at the last minute so um, that's why normally you would do this first because I really needed to flip it around but I have all this stuff on it now so okay so I'm going to just glue this. I don't want to hide the spindles too much because that really gives it a lot of character. And we definitely want to keep the character of the wreath. Wreaths are very popular. People love to invite their friends and their family into their home. And, you know, most wreaths do kind of give an indication about who lives in the home. It's a first impression. Neighbors also are generally envious of some of the wreaths that people hang on their homes. <clears throat> and it's great curb appeal. So it definitely is kind of important because it's like a first impression. Okay, so these are these like, I think they're called clamshells. I could be wrong on that too. I'm definitely not 100% sure what these are called. But I just decided to put those here and I think I'm just gonna, I think this is a muscle. You can tell me if I'm wrong with that too. <laughs> just doing these kind of guesses. Okay, so we're gonna stick that little baby in there. And, and I'm going to put him up here because this is heavier and this, this whole thing will help hold that in place. Okay. So I might put like another little shell here. Okay. So I'm going to put that little there and I think that's going to be it. So once again, please feel free to participate in my giveaway and I will pick the winner again on January 30th. And then I might actually do another giveaway. I haven't decided yet, depends on how crazy I am in February. But um, like I said, like, subscribe, comment, and then go to my Facebook <clears throat> page and comment done and Make sure you like my page so that when I actually announce the winner, it's going to be on my Facebook page. It's not going to be on my YouTube channel. 
it's going to be on the Facebook page. All right, there you go. And um, if anybody also has any ideas for future reads, I would love to hear about it. That would be awesome. All right, until next time, thank you. Thank you.